Are you kidding me? A federal judge on Thursday warned SEC attorneys that he may sanction them for allegedly convincing a court to freeze a crypto firm's assets under false and misleading pretenses. A court filing shows also Bitcoin zoomed in right now, $42,000 target, a little mini breakout occurring. There's one thing though on the daily chart that really needs to occur in order for this mini breakout to turn into that, that explosive move through $40,000 that we really want to see. I'm going to break down the Bitcoin charts on the shorter term. So please hit the subscribe, hit the like, and I want to start with, with what is going on here. This is insane. U.S. judge warns SEC over false and misleading requests in crypto case. Everybody, are you kidding me right now? This is the SEC's website protecting you, protecting you. I've been tracking crypto for years, especially lately. We've been tracking the SEC cases. SEC is just attacking everybody in crypto. And everything they're doing has been opposite of protecting you and I. And I know so many of you agree with me. It is so manipulative and destructive what they're doing to everyday investors, not even just in the U.S., because this really impacts everybody across the globe. And we're really getting insights into how much they hate you and I. We're really getting insights. Look what they're doing. SEC attorneys could be sanctioned for making misleading arguments about crypto project Debtbox's alleged efforts to transfer its assets and investor funds overseas, leading the court to freeze the project's bank accounts. Their bank accounts were frozen. The SEC's misrepresentations undermine the integrity of the case's proceedings. Irreparable harm, the judge said in the order. A federal judge, and here's what happened, the first slap debt box with temporary restraining order restricting its access to assets in August. However, he later dissolved the order after debt box demonstrated it had neither moved funds outside the U.S. nor closed its bank accounts two days before hearing over the SEC request to freeze its funds. So that's what truly happened. So Judge Shelby asked the SEC attorneys to respond to his findings in that, or findings that their arguments alleged alleging Debtbox had attempted to move its funds overseas lacked context and were not factual. So basically explain yourself. Why are, why are you lying? Why are you, why are you manipulating information in this case to kind of get what you want? It is, so, it is so destructive. But here's the thing. Whatever happens in this case will continue to track. But this right here, this headline, it's such a loss. It's a, another L for the SEC. And we've been tracking all the losses lately. And I've been continuing to say it's because the law is not on their side. And if the law is not on their side, how are they, how are they going to win any of these cases? How are they going to get through these cases? It's going to be by lying, which is next level, everybody. Look, Grayscale wins court battle against SEC. Regulator must review Bitcoin ETF application. That was in August, not long ago. Remember this one? Federal judge dismissed the lawsuit against Uniswap. What does it mean for SEC's case against Coinbase? The question is because... The federal judge that dismissed the lawsuit against Uniswap recently, that's Judge Fila. She's the one overseeing the Coinbase versus SEC case. What does the X XRP not a security ruling mean for other cryptos? Remember that one? XRP ruled not a security, another loss for SEC. And here we go. Judge, There's Judge Fila right there. Criticizes SEC approval of Coinbase IPO and pre-motion conference. Judge Fila already, if you look at the pre-motion proceedings, already Judge Fila just suspicious of the SEC kind of seeing right through them, I think. That's my take on, on reading, you know, how she's communicating. And then here's another, so those are a bunch of losses. And then here's another loss. House committee chairman threatens SEC chair with subpoena, but not over crypto. So this, this happened, right? And, and I want to go into detail a little bit more. Not, not huge, but J John Deaton just posted a little bit ago. This was... He like just posted this. This is insane. Any person surprised a federal judge is considering sanctions against the SEC for lying to the court in case involving crypto has not been paying attention during the last three years. It appears the lawyers at the SEC have made it personal when it comes to crypto cases. And that's the thing, everybody. It's personal. That's why when I cover these things, like I try and be very respectful of all the things that are happening, but it is so personal against you and I. SEC lawyers like Jorge Tenriero, and this other one, don't hesitate to intentionally mislead the court. They don't hesitate. They're straight up misleading the court. Despite federal judges calling out the SEC, including a judge saying SEC lawyers lack a, faith, a faithful allegiance to the law, and the SEC blatantly ignoring congressional requests, the Financial Committee is hesitant to issue a congressional subpoena. 
And this is because we've seen the Congress, the financial committee talk about issuing a subpoena. Like, come on, Gary, we're going to issue a subpoena. But it's like, it kind of has been all talk. And so it looks like John here is just saying, sir, you and others by sitting on that committee know the oath you took requires that you conduct congressional oversight of Gary Gensler and the SEC. Uh, and I realize the subpoena has never been issued to the SEC. I realize you respect tradition and congressional norms. But what more must happen before serving a subpoena? These people need to be held accountable. They're, again, <laughs> their website says protecting you, and they're doing everything opposite. And so we're seeing this play out time and time again. And right now we're getting firsthand insight into what it's even looking like on the deeper levels within cases, misleading, lying. It's insane to see. So that's the news for today in regards to SEC. Let's check out this Bitcoin chart. So, you know, we've been tracking this rising, broadening, ascending wedge, whatever you want to call it in yellow. We've been tracking this uptrend of Bitcoin. It's pretty insane going back here to end like October 24th, over a month, right? Just higher highs, higher lows. It has not broken down yet. Despite, if we go to the daily chart, despite on the daily, the bearish divergence that was just setting up, right? So we're talking about momentum falling, lower highs while price is rising. It's bearish divergence. It's, it's, it's very similar to what we saw, and we've, we've done the comparison a lot back here. Higher highs on the price, and then the momentum starts falling. And then what happened? Bitcoin f fell, right, below the 20-day, popped back up for one more high, and then really fell. That's that bearish divergence. But right now, Bitcoin on the momentum oscillator, it just hasn't broken down, and, and it's, it's doing more of a bull market thing so far. But I, I just want to point something out on the momentum oscillator. But so far, it's doing a bull market thing, and that is to say seeing support right here around the 50, right? So, and, and the reason I say bull market a bull market thing is because if you go into a bull market, if you look, just look back, it's kind of, you'll see Bitcoin kind of bouncing off of this area, the 50 area, right? Just continuing to bounce in that area and go higher. So right now, Bitcoin has done that. And if you notice on the price chart, it hasn't broken below the 20 day moving average and the 20 day moving average right now around 37,300, right? So over a thousand dollars below, still have a little cushion even to the 20 day in green. And so we're, we're starting, I mean, I should say, I am starting to really wonder, are we going to get another pop up into overbought, towards overbought, a breakout per se? Now, here's what I'm watching on this momentum oscillator. It's this trend line that you see here. So yeah, Bitcoin kind of cruised down, hit right just above the 50 on the RSI, and we're cruising back up in momentum, but I'm not so convinced with the momentum you move just yet you can see this, this trend line kind of just stemming back here. I think it's a good trend line that stems back to this oversold area just to use. If Bitcoin can actually start breaking above that and enter once again overbought, this, this really could lead to, I would say, a breakout like we've never seen before. And if you've been watching my technical analysis recently, you know that this is exactly what we've been tracking, right? If we zoom out on the, on the daily chart, really, and I'm talking zoom out on the cycles, and we go back to similar environments where Bitcoin is right now, that would be right here. Bitcoin has fallen, right? And it even did it all the way back here in 2016. It fell. This is a similar move that Bitcoin made back then. It fell uh, to the downside. If Bitcoin actually doesn't fall right now and breaks to the upside, and that's the, mo that's the move we're monitoring, it's going to be like something we haven't seen. And it will be an incredibly bullish narrative that will be spreading. Don't know if it's going to happen. But that momentum oscillator we just looked at on the daily, I think is a key thing that we should be tracking. Now in the short term, this is a six hour. There's the short term breakout to the upside, $42,000 target. That would be the move, everybody. Breaking this yellow trend line uh, and hitting the target of this ascending triangle that we have, a short term ascending triangle going back to like beginning of November or so, November 9th, it looks like. $42,000 target. So in this process of just tracking this move, Still not convinced of the momentum breakout that we just looked at on the daily chart, right? It's, it's all here. So I think there's an absolutely case Bitcoin can fall still. 50-day moving average down here. We have the 33000 just above $33,000 target. But this pop of momentum that might occur, it is set up. It's set up. We even have a trend line breakout on the six hour, which is this upper trend line. So what I'll be monitoring on the very short term, or maybe tonight over this weekend is kind of like, does it continue to separate from this trend line? 
do we get a throwback, which is so often true of these ascending triangles, especially near the apex. So we're getting a breakout right around the apex, probably 70% of the way to the apex or so, which is 100% normal uh, and common for these moves. But oftentimes we'll get a throwback to the apex to test the area, whether it's just the trend line around 37,900 or the apex itself could be the lower trend line that we test around 37,000, right? So are we going to get a throwback? Is there support for continuation to the $42,000 target? It could be a very exciting December if this plays out like this or just like this. This is what I'm watching going into the weekend as we watch these Bitcoin charts, crypto charts in general. Are we going to keep going higher? And I've been saying for some time, there's that bearish divergence. It really looks like it's time for Bitcoin and crypto to just consolidate. Nothing crazy, nothing bearish, but just, just come back down. And it just hasn't happened yet. So it's kind of an exciting thing to track on these crypto charts going into this weekend. Let me know what you think will happen, everybody. I appreciate you cruising through uh, late Friday night. If you're watching this Saturday, I hope you're having a good weekend so far. I'll see you in the next video. God bless.